You ready? I hope so. <laughs> Me now. Ah! Okay, okay, okay. We got this. Okay. Hello, and welcome to the Accessible Enneagram, an Enneagram podcast for everyone. I'm your co-host, Tori, and my pronouns are they, them, theirs. And I'm your other co-host, Meg, and I use she and they pronouns. Um, we are hoping to make this the most accessible Enneagram podcast out there. Um, we're doing this in a couple different ways. First off, we're making it accessible from a disability standpoint. So we will be having this both video with closed captioning and audio. And then we are also making this accessible from an identity perspective, making sure that we acknowledge that there are differences in how we each experience life from the perspective of power and oppression. So we are trying to be as inclusive as possible, as accessible as possible, and also accessible from an introductory Enneagram level, because we want anyone to be able to listen to this podcast and actually know what the heck we're talking about. We do not particularly care how old the Enneagram is, uh, there's this sort of appeal to ancient wisdom thing that happens when people like something and want it to be meaningful. Uh, but the Enneagram doesn't need to have been thousands of years old and invented in Mesopotamia to be helpful to us. So we're going to be focusing on the way it is currently understood, which is a psycho spiritual tool for growth. It is not prescriptive. It is based not on your behavior, but on your motivations, uh, which means that you are the only person that can truly understand yourself and your own type. And we will be focusing on a strengths-based approach to the Enneagram, um, not on our foibles and flaws, even though as uh, we all know, we all have those as humans, but we're trying to grow and be better humans. And keep in mind, strengths-based perspective, this is not a system to you know drag other people down. This is a system for you and your personal growth and your better integration with other people. Exactly. So the other golden rule of this podcast is to not use the Enneagram to be a dick. Just don't be a dick. It's so easy to be kind and not be a dick. So just try not to. The best way to go through the triads is to start with number two, which as a one, will annoy me till the day I die, but that's okay because if, from an efficiency standpoint, it makes the most sense to start with the two. And they avoid feelings of distress by completely throwing themselves into these relationships, um, sometimes at their own personal cost. So again, they avoid feeling needy because that is distressing to them um, because they just want to help everybody else. They don't they want to be needed. They don't want to be needy. They're really perceptive about what social dynamics are and like how to show up in a space that's going to be the most advantageous for them. Um, that be level of being strategic can be really helpful, especially if you have other intersecting oppressions that mean that people aren't going to listen to you as easily or take you as seriously. And then we have the four, which just throws themselves fully into the distress. Feel all the feelings. Exactly. They love depth. That's their thing. And that means, you know, why on earth would you shout out certain emotions? You need to feel the full depth of being human. So you have to feel everything. Um, so that's the number of the heart triad that just absolutely commits to <laughs> the distress part of it. So that you'll see fives just like trying to accumulate more and more and more information like if if they're stressed they just they can't make decisions unless they know literally everything um you might be a five if you are the kind of person who reads like every product review and does cross comparisons before you make any purchase with the six which meg's going to talk about which again is the number that's just like takes the anxiety and just like lives there, mm -hmm. um, which can be their strength. Um, there's plenty of like people who are sixes who are EMTs because again, you know, like, oh, it's an anxiety provoking situation. Cool. That's my Tuesday. Their anxiety is often around like wasted potential. What if I, if I do this and not this, then I may be missing out. Like the FOMO is just so bad for a seven. Mm -hmm. 
eights use that as part of their power. Um, they get angry when people are mistreated. They get angry when they see the weak being taken advantage of. They say, no, this isn't right. And that makes them angry and they show that anger. Eights can be amazing advocates for other people. You know, if they have some more resources or skills to like know how to not piss everyone off just immediately, um, they can be super effective cultural dynamics can really affect how each number experiences the world. Like eights can often really struggle in our culture because anger isn't like, depending on your identities, anger isn't super appropriate. Like an eight who is a person of color or who is um, a woman might just experience this in a really different way than an eight who is a, a cisgender white man because of the way that that anger is seen culturally and like whether it's scary or inappropriate or not to express. Nines are at their best when they realize that they are important and that their opinions and presence are important and to have boundaries around that so that they can truly be in relationship with other people instead of just kind of like gooping out and like melding onto them emotionally. Our relationship with anger is really different than the eights um, because we do feel angry. We just call it frustrated because that's far more socially acceptable. Um, but I'm low key frustrated all the time because things aren't right, because the world is imperfect and I want things to be perfect. We're one out of nine numbers. Not everybody else cares as much about doing the dishes the right way. You can enjoy the Enneagram podcast without knowing your type, but obviously you'll, you're going to want to know your type eventually. Absolutely. Again, Enneagram is a tool for self-growth. It's a tool for self-understanding. Um, so it's really great to listen to it, but you are going to get so much more out of this and out of life, quite frankly, if you are able to identify your Enneagram number um, and then move forward from there. I think the way that you know what your number is, is when you see something that you feel deeply called out where you see an Enneagram meme, which I love. I love those memes. We're going to start an Instagram account basically just to share those memes. Um, but when you see something and you're like, oh, oh, that's me. Oh, don't at me that hard. <laughs> that's when you know that's your number. Please tune in again with us uh, next time for our in-depth exploration of the two. Episode three will be threes, episode four will be fours, um, and we'll end with episode 10 being ones, um, yes. which still has a one in it, so there. Yeah, there. See ones, we're doing fine. It's all right. You'll be okay. Even if you didn't get the first episode, you'll be all right. We'll manage. All right. Uh, thank you for listening. I'm Tori. And I'm Meg. We hope that you can grow with us. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>